Hey guys, this is Curtis Alexander. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a new medication that was recently approved uh, for myasthenia gravis, and it's Vivgard. Um, I basically want to get an overview. I had a question about, because it's a neurology medication, my overall thoughts, so I just want to hop right into it. Um, right now, there's not a ton of resources for folks with myasthenia gravis, um, which I'll just call MG from here on out. It's easier to say. Um, so Vivgard has been welcomed in because there's kind of only been one other main medication that people have tried, also very expensive, and I'll get to that in a second. So starting out, the one thing I would, do want to mention about it, it is new and it does have a unique mechanism of action in the body. So what we have is a neonatal FC receptor blocker, and I'll get into a little bit of what that actually does in the body. But with what we find with myasthenia gravis or MG is that there are certain people that can have um, acetylcholine receptor antibodies or anti-acetylcholine receptor antibodies that show up in their body and that the downstream effect of this is that we have this communication issue between the nerves and the muscles and that's where we see the weakness, especially respiratory weakness, swallowing weakness. Um, some of these life-threatening things that we see with MG. So what Vivgard does is it's able to block this anti-acetylcholine receptor uh, antibody and the end result is that we see a decrease in IgG or immunoglobulin G and, and this is what we believe helps with the nerve and muscle communication and it is unique in this regard. So what about the results? What did the study show us? Well, first of all, Vivgard was basically went through a rapid approval process. So we don't have as many studies per se as we do for some other medications, but uh, the one study that they relied on was around 168 folks. They randomized those people, half of them into a placebo group, half of them into the Vivgard group. And what they found is that the Vivgard group saw 68%, 68% of those folks saw an improvement in their daily activities versus 30% that received the placebo. Now, the first thing that people usually ask me, it's kind of a side note here, well, how did 30% of them see improvement with the placebo? It does show you the power of our minds in, in these studies. So, But the point being is that there was a significant difference between the two. The downside of these studies is this is all patient reported improvements. So it's basically off a questionnaire. So we're not able to measure labs and make it more objective. It tends to be subjective because patients are just reporting, yeah, I, I felt better today or I felt better over these weeks that I received the therapy. But we did see improvement in daily activity. We did also see an improvement in reported muscle weakness. So the Vivgard group did say, yes, I, there's, I, I'm experiencing less muscle weakness now. Okay, as far as dosing, this is important to know, Vivgard is an infusion. So you are gonna have to go into an infusion center um, once a week. It's based off your weight, so everybody's is gonna be different, but they will infuse you once a week for four weeks. That's considered a cycle. Um, whether you do more cycles is going to be up to your response and what your neurologist feels is appropriate, but that's how it's dosed. The big thing that I want to talk about is the side effect profile. Everybody wants to know about side effects. Vivgard is no different in that regard. There are some significant side effect risks that come with it. The first one being your risk of infection goes up by a fair amount. Why does that happen? Again, remember what we see, we do see decreased IgG in the blood, which helps with the nerve and muscle communication, we believe, but IgG is also involved in your immune response. So when you see less of that, we can see an increase in infections. In particular, in the study, there was a 33% incidence of upper respiratory tract infections in the Vivgard group. Um, there was also a 10% occurrence of urinary tract infections in the Vivgard group. So something to keep in mind if you move forward with the therapy. The other thing that was fairly common was a 32% incidence of headache. 
So, um, but if you're somebody with MG, the trade-off of the increased risk of an infection is probably worth it. But just so you're aware. Now, the, <laughs> the biggest thing is the price. Um, a couple of points to keep in mind here. It's extremely expensive if you had to pay cash on the barrel head. The manufacturer of uh, Vivgard said probably close to a quarter million dollars for, for an average one-year therapy. Now, you don't know um, what average is because some people can do more than one cycle, but that's what they quoted as the average. Nobody that I know of is going to want to pay that or be able to pay it. Um, so basically we're talking about insurance at this point. Now the one thing to keep in mind with any infusion or any infusion that I'm aware of, it's not billed through your prescription benefit, it's billed through your medical benefit. So the thing to do that I would do is call your insurance and ask them, is VivGuard covered? What hoops do you have to jump through? You're probably going to have to get what's called a prior authorization. All these things can be done. It's most likely you're going to have to know what's your deductible that you have to meet and then what is your copay going to be those are the questions you want to ask your insurance the other thing that i will point out and i will put a link to it in the description is that the manufacturer of vivgard like a lot of these ultra expensive medications does have a patient assistance program a copay assistance program there's a lot of criteria that you'll have to hit but it's it's a good option if your insurance doesn't provide very good coverage. So that's Vivgard as a whole. Um, you know, I do think it's an exciting thing for MG patients. I think it's definitely something worth looking into. It doesn't come without some downsides, which is the infection risk that we talked about. So that's something to discuss with your neurologist. Any questions, post them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. And I hope this video was helpful. And until the next one, this is Curtis Alexander. Thank you.